Hello all. Good morning. Good morning to US people and good evening for Indian people. Hi. My name is Nisarga Kadam and welcome you all to the day three session of UiPath Crash Course. So we will get start soon. Just let me share my screen. So earlier, within last two sessions, we have covered introduction to RPA and introduction to UiPath. And also in the day two session, we have seen various examples of data types and variables such as string, integer, array, date and time. And also we have seen control flow logics just as, such as while, do while, switch case. Today, we are going to see data scraping, screen scraping, and different types of recordings which UiPath provides. So let's get started with a new process. So before we get started, start your application of UiPath. I give you one minute for that. Come to this page and we will create a new process for today's session and we will name it as day three scripting and recording and we'll write in the description what are the topics that we are going to cover so it's like screen scraping data scraping and we are going to see different types of recordings so i'll say create and once again thank you so much for joining Okay, so as soon as you create a new project, as you know, we have seen yesterday, we have to click on open main window to open a blank screen, which is a white canvas for designing of workflow. Go to the activities panel. Sometimes we end up writing activity names in the project panel. That happens with me also a lot of times. Go to the activities panel and drag a flow chart. We are going to follow our method, which we saw yesterday. We are going to create small, small sequences inside a flow chart which will be easy for us to track. So I'll drag one sequence and today we are going to see what is data scraping feature, what is screen scraping and what are the different types of recordings which UiPath provides. So I can see already 77 participants have joined. Uh, so let's get started uh, without wasting our time. So what is data scraping? If you guys have attended the first session in the session one, where I was giving introduction to RPA and introduction to UiPath, you might have seen, I gave an example where I captured some data from Amazon website and I stored the data into CSV format, just like an Excel to print the data. So that feature has that features name is data scraping in UiPath. Now data scraping allows you to capture structured data from any website, Web websites, applications, or any document. So you can capture data out of a document, which is native document out of any website or any windows based application, wherever the data is in a structured format. Now the data could be in tabular format or the data could be in structured format. So before we go forward with data scraping, just make sure whenever we are using data scraping, we store the data or the outcome that we want into a structured format. So that structured format has to be saved into either a CSV format, which is a comma separate value, or we can save it into Excel file. So let's see all different, different types of examples from where we can capture data using data scraping. So let's see the first example. We'll take example of Flipkart. Now I know none of the retail websites are working as of now. They have mentioned pause, but not for long. Amazon has the same. So I'll search. Yeah, I have headphones on top search. So I'll search headphone. Now we have huge amount of information here of different, different types of headphones. Okay. They are temporary and available, not a problem, but I want to capture all this data into Excel. Now, how can I tell that this data is in a structured format? Now, how do you know when to use data scraping? 
So when you should use data scraping, when you can see all the values are in a structured format. For example, now every example here, every headphone here has one image. They have name, they have price and some offer. So it is similar for all different, different types of headphones. So that means this data is structured. Similarly, even if you go to LinkedIn, and if you click on, let's say your profile, or maybe let's say my network, and you click on some, let's say I click on people I follow. So I can see here, every person has a name, designation, and how many posts this week. So this is similar with each and every person. So that is what makes a structured data. So for such data, I will use data scraping. So let's go ahead and let's utilize our data scraping feature to fetch data from headphones or Flipkart. So I'll go back to studio. In studio, I'll directly click on the data scraping part, which is on header. I'll click on it. Now what it says, it's a wizard. It says, open your browser, application, document, or navigate to where you want to extract data from. Now, and then press next in the dialog and hover the mouse cursor over a data source field. Okay. So select the pattern, you know, all this data is going to be in structured format. So select a pattern. So let's click on next and I'll indicate the name of this first headphone. Now what it says, it says to create a pattern, you need to indicate similar field preferable in the last collection. Okay. Not a problem. I'll indicate just right next one next to it. But now once you have selected the first and second one, make sure that all any other correlated data that you're scripting capture from this two only. Now I, it is asking for two different options. Either you can extract the text or you can extract the URL behind this text. I want both. I'll say this is my brand and this is my link. I'll click on next. As soon as I click on next, the data is captured, which is in a similar format from this website. Now I want more correlated data. So on this wizard, if you can see, you have option to capture more correlated data. So click on extra correlated data and select price. Click on next and select price of the next element. And then give the column name as price and click on next. You have price column. Again, if I want one more data, you can correlate and capture any number of data that you want. So click on next and this time I'm capturing the percentage or maybe you can call it as offer. Okay. Now I have offer also. Okay. Let's that it, uh, let it be. I want only these four values and I want these values for 20 different headphones. Now, once I have this value for 20 different headphones, I'll say finish. Now this is not going to give me data immediately. This is just what we are showing to our UiPath workflow. So now this website or this page might not have 20 in the same pattern. So we have to go to next page and that is what it is asking. Identify the element that navigates to the next page. It could be a next button or an arrow. I say, yes, there is, and I will indicate the next button and that's it. My data scraping is done. Automatically in the extract structured data activity, you can see in the properties extract data table named variable is created. I did not create this variable. If you go to the variables panel, this variable is by default a data table. Wonderful. What we will do is we will write this data into Excel. So to write data into Excel, what we will do, we will just say write range. And while we say write range, we will drag the activity, which is under workbook, write range. Remember, not under Excel, drag the activity under workbook. If you don't have this activity, write range, don't worry. You have to install, go to manage packages, go to official and install a package called as uipath.excel.activities. Once you install this package, you will have these activities. So drag write range under workbook below this extract structure data and in the workbook path. Now I don't have any Excel, which is already existing in my folder. If I open the folder structure, I don't have any Excel here. So I will create one. I will say 
this is my flipkart dot xlsx and save you need to give extension also make sure that i want to write this data into sheet 1 and from a1 column and then the data table name the name of the data table is extract data table i'll save come back select as a start node and now we have not created a workflow to open the website and go to the page and then capture the data we have just captured the data so make sure that you have this web page open before you execute now let's say run once i execute you can see the page is going to the next page it is going to the next page automatically until it captures 20 data and done now if you go to output panel you can see within 8 seconds it automatically captured some of the data now where can i see this data i just need to go to project panel and refresh open the folder and here is your excel open the excel and you have all the information 20 information now there are some of the points where this discount is missing so it could be a case where the discount price is not written for this product so not a problem it won't be captured so it won't give you any error if the value of the pattern is mismatching or if it is missing it will just print blank but if you understand if you if you have observed there is no header what did we miss if you go to workflow if you click on right range activity on the properties there is one option called as add headers we did not check this option so just click on add headers save and not a problem you can go back you can go to flipkart go to headphone section and execute this particular workflow again let's see what happens Once I execute it again, now when I refresh, as I have used right range activity, the data is not going to get appended. The data is going to get overwritten. So if I open this Excel file, I get the header name also. And perfect data of 20. Now I can go ahead and I can utilize this Excel, sort, filter, whatever the operations that you want to do. Or else you can do these operations using UI path also. We will see that in upcoming lectures when we are going to see Excel automation. Okay. So this is one of the example where the structured data is captured. Now let's look at another example. For example, I have a website. Now I'll just close this flip card. I didn't want it. Now, for example, let's go and let's search. We want information which is already in a tabular format. We are going to see one more example. So let's say Corona, because it's a hit topic right now, world map. In the Corona world map, there is a website, which is of google.org. Now I want to capture in this website, there is this data. I want to capture this data and I want to store it in an maybe CSV file and, and I want to write this as a whole program. So let's go and let's start writing as an entire program. What we'll do is basically we'll take one sequence. We'll first of all connect it to the start node. Save. Open the sequence. And we want to make sure that we open browser also. So we'll type open browser. We'll drag open browser activity inside the sequence. Now look at the properties. In the properties, we have a browser type, different, different, such as IE, Firefox, Chrome. I'll select Chrome. And make sure if you are selecting Chrome, make sure that you have Chrome extension for UiPath also. So you get such kind of extensions for different, different applications. So make sure you have UiPath extension. Where to get this extension? You just have to go to home and tools and click on this Chrome icon. Automatically extension will be installed for you. It is that easy. So just go to open browser and I want to write the website name. So I'll go back to Chrome copy the name of this website and go back and I'll print it here. Save. Now I want to maximize my screen. So I'll write maximize window. 
maximize window just op just maximizes your browser when it opens and once it maximizes after that i want to capture the data so for that i'll go and i'll use data scraping now this time observe properly as this data is also structured however this data is already in a tabular format where you can see the data in rows and columns so i'll go back i'll click on data scraping it says go to the document or the browser and i'll say next and i'll indicate let's say location or let's say any any element from this table as soon as i click what it says you selected a table cell would you like to extract the data from the whole table isn't that wonderful we wanted entire table so we'll say yes and as soon as you click on yes you get entire data with location confirm cases recoveries along with all this information now i want all the data which is there present on this website so i'll check this maximum number of results zero for all so i'll type okay zero i'll say finish now if it is asking if there is a next button is there a next button no so this time i'll say no and that's it done however this data scraping model is created separately from our sequence so what we need to do we just need to go inside cut this part control x come back into our workflow and paste it here control b so i simply used control x control b of my keyboard and then come back to this extract structure now why it is giving issue because this data table was in outer scope so what i'll do is i'll just remove this data table name and i'll create a new one so i'll click on here i'll right click and i'll save corona void record and enter save now i want this data into csv format so i'll say csv and i'll drag a right csv activity csv is a comma separated values i'll come down and in the file path i'll write the name of the csv i'll say void status dot csv you need to give extension and it has to be in double quotation however the variable should not be in double quotation and save now i'll repeat again i used open browser activity i gave the url i maximized the window i did data scraping and i cut that particular module i pasted it here and inside this i wrote write csv activity and then i want to close my browser as a best practice so i'll drag it below write csv and that's it my workflow is done i'll say data scraping corona save and let's close this website let's see how it works i will say run it opens browser and done if you check the output the workflow executed just in 5 seconds now if you go back if you go to the project panel if you refresh you can see void status dot csv is created just double click to open it and you get to see that entire data is stored in the csv file all 185 countries which are affected now you can utilize this data one by one to check the record or else you can run this workflow in a schedule of every 30 minutes or maybe let's say 4 hours and you can get the data every 4 hour status so this is how you can utilize data scraping in very extensive way and this is very beautiful feature of ui path it captures structured data now i believe you might have a question can we capture tabular data tabular data from document like pdf let's go ahead and let's check if we can do this let's say i have a pdf in this pdf i have data multiple data however i have a tabular data and i want to capture this data now now listen to me properly see 
if this data if this pdf is a native pdf what do i mean by native pdf i can select the data if i cannot select this data that means that image that pdf is a image pdf we cannot capture data as a structured format from image as of now using data scraping we can capture from native pdf where we can select the pdf now to capture this data from this table what we will do is we'll just use data scraping and let's check if we are able to do this click on next now as soon as i click on next one reading untagged document assistive technology pop up came up now what i have to do i have to click here but i'm not able to do because i'm already in a recording mode and i'm not able to click on the start button because if i click it to record this now what do i do to pause recording to come out of this recording mode the screen recording mode what i have to do i have to press f2 button on my keyboard f2 button is used for delay which will be for 3 seconds as soon as i click on f2 you can see on the bottom right side of my screen there will be 3 seconds of counter f2 in the meantime i'll say start and recording mode starts again now i am able to click on single elements i'll click on the speed element and it captures entire data from table data is little bit of messed up but that can be sorted not a problem so the moral is we can capture tabular data from pdf also so we can utilize data scraping for application for pdf and for web applications now let's jump on to the next topic which is screen scraping now under screen scraping screen see data scraping we utilize it for structured data capturing similarly screen scraping is a different part exactly opposite part where we can capture data which is unstructured data now what do i mean by unstructured data so let's say if i have a website like this docs.uipart.com okay now from this website i want to capture some of this information which is written let's say here this example i want to capture this example or maybe i want to capture this node now this is unstructured data this is not any structured data so in order to capture this data we have screen scraping feature now screen scraping allows you to capture data using three different types now note it down first type is full text method second type is native method and third type is ocr which is optical character recognition now full text ocr and native all three have their own properties now how do they work and what are their own properties we'll see now let's click on screen scraping as soon as we click on screen scraping recording mode get started now remember if you want to scroll down just click on f2 button and you can scroll in the 3 seconds of period again recording mode get started so f2 is used for delay of 3 seconds now select any data which is unstructured let's say i want this data okay now why i am able to select this element because my ui path extension is enabled i am again telling you if you are not able to capture this data properly on chrome prefer ie browser internet explorer by default supports ui path if you want to work with chrome just enable the extension now i select this element let's say this one and i click okay as soon as i click the data gets captured and i'm able to see the preview of data which is being captured example and the data is captured perfectly however font will not come exactly the same however the string is captured and that is what we want so you can capture this data and now on the right hand side if you see there is a scraping method which has three different options full text native and ocr now quickly if you can write down small difference between this full text native and ocr so that we can use it extensively so full text works best for websites or web based automation also full text can capture hidden data now what do i mean by hidden data i'll tell you in some time also full text works faster and it can work for minimized browser also 
or else you can utilize full text for windows based applications also not a problem however it works best for websites that is what i have observed till now now the next method is native okay remember full text doesn't preserve it does not preserve text position on screen now let's come to native native works best for windows based application also it cannot capture hidden data it is faster it is 100% reliable not a problem however it doesn't work for minimized application or browser so background automation is not supported for native and it preserves text position on screen on the other hand ocr now ocr is used when we want to capture data out of image it works best for citrix application or games it cannot capture hidden data it doesn't work for minimized obviously because screen has to be present for you know image has to be on screen to capture the data and it preserves the text position now these are main three different points about full text native and ocr if you get this your automation will be more easy and you will get exactly which method to utilize at what point of time so full text works best for website can capture hidden data it's faster it is it works for minimize also and does not preserve text position that is only the one disadvantage full text has native on the other hand can work best for windows based application it can work for web based also but i have noticed that it works best for windows applications cannot capture hidden data doesn't work for minimize application and it preserves text position and on the other hand ocr is it it captures text out of image so it captures text out of image works best for citrix application games it cannot be captured it cannot capture hidden data and doesn't work for minimize and text position it can capture now write down the name of activities for all these three things so screen scraping wizard which is this one is utilized when you want to test and you want to preview which method works best however in your real time workflow you have to use the activity so write down the name of activity for full text it is get full text activity so if you go to ui path uh say close click on the activities and if you just type full text the name of the activity is get full text activity then for native the name of activity is get visible text and for ocr the name of activity is get ocr text remember the names of all these three different different activities and by default if you use get screen method then get text is the activity which is used by default however we should utilize these three things when it comes to exact automation and when you want to capture unstructured data now let's see different different applications of all these three now i have already told you about full text now let's see how full text works so let's go to screen scraping again and i i have already shown you that once you select any unstructured data you can see screen scraping full text method captures it perfectly now let's go and select native now once you change the scraping method make sure that you refresh so refresh and you see native method failed to scrape the ui element now why it failed because i told you native method works best for windows based application rather than web based automation so you see just indicate the ui element let's say this one using native 
and native method fails. On the other hand, if you select full text and indicate the UI element, full text method captures the data. Isn't that perfect? So this is why we should utilize full text activity while working with web-based automation. Okay. Now let's jump on to region. Now there are two different options as you can see here. Region is nothing but where you can indicate specific area on screen. Let's say I indicate this area and I can capture only that data. Let's refresh. Look at the region. See, indicate region works best for OCR. So it, it's showing blank, right? However, the data is there. So it's better that you select UI element which gives you the best option. Now, how to use it as an activity? Let's go back to our workflow and let's see a sequence connected with the start node and take both the activities, get full text and indicate on screen. Now, I have taken one sequence. Inside that sequence, I have taken one get full text activity. It asks, to indicate on screen. So I'll click on indicate on screen and I'll indicate this particular element. Okay. And I need to create output. Now, when I'm capturing some value from screen, I have to store it in some data, right? So that is why I'm creating a variable. I'll say create variable and I'll write uh, text one. Okay. Save. And I will check whether the variable is created or not. Yes. However, the variable is of generic value type. I'll change it to string. Save. And let's print it in message box. Text one. Save. And let's execute. See, I got text variables as output. So this is how, if you want to capture unstructured value, you can utilize either three of these activities, get full text, native and OCR. Now let's look at example of how to capture data from, so this was the example of full text. Now let's look at the example of native method. Now I told you native method works best with the windows based applications. Now let's say I want to automate a process where I want to open CMD. Okay, and I want to type maybe, let's say Python, which gives me Python information or let's say exit. Sorry, exit. Okay. Now, if you see my cursor is pointing here, here, and then here. And if I say one more time exit, it will exit out of command prompt. Now, what I want to do is I want to perform automation of this process I just showed you. What I'll do, I'll drag a sequence. I'll rename this sequence as native method. I'll show you why native method. Right click and select it as a start node. Now what do I want to do to open a command prompt? I want to click on windows button on my keyboard. Then automatically my cursor is pointing here if you see. Then I want to type CMD. And then I want to hit enter button on my keyboard. So there are two keyboard entries and there is one type into. So let's automate that. In order to enter keyboard entry, what you need to do, the name of the activity is hotkey. So send hotkey. Utilize a send hotkey activity. In this activity, you can perform multiple combinations of key. If you want to do control A for selection of all the text, control C for copy, control V for pasting, or something control shift D. So like that, you can utilize many, many keyboard activities. Not a problem. Let's go ahead and let's see what we can do. So I have to utilize windows button. So I just want to click on windows. That's it. I don't want to indicate anything on screen. After that, I want to type into CMD. I'll write it in double quotation. Now, why I'm not selecting anything on screen? Because as soon as Windows button is clicked, automatically my cursor is going to be at this point. 
So I don't have to indicate that unless and until I'm sure that the cursor is at that specific position. Then I'll again utilize send hotkey and I'll say enter. Otherwise, I can do enter in this activity to reduce the number of activities. Yes, you can utilize the plus button of type into to add a keyboard command. So add enter. That's it. Now let's see how this works. So I have connected native method to start node. I'll say run. See, it opens command prompt. Wonderful. Now, as soon as command prompt opens, we want to type into again. Now this time, we don't want to take a risk and we will indicate on screen the command prompt application. And in command prompt, we are going to write any command. Now let's say I have a Python, that's why I'm writing Python. If you want to write, let's say IP config to get the configuration of Wi-Fi or the IP addresses, you can just type IP config and then you can get this information and say exit, right? So what I'll do, I'll utilize the same method, IP config. And once I type IP config, I want to click on enter. Because once you type, you want to click enter, right? Sorry, I close CMD. I'll open it again. So type IP config. And then I want to capture all this data. Now, if you go to screen scripting and if you try to capture this data using full text method, what will happen? This is the Windows based application. So your full text method failed to capture the UI element. Now, if I use native method to indicate the same, then I'm going to get entire information. So native method works best for my windows based application. So I will test it. I'll say, okay, I'll go back. And for native method, what is the name of the activity? Get visible text. So I will drag one get visible text activity below my type into screen. I will indicate on screen this information and I will create a variable for it. Right click and say IP config. I am going to convert that variable from generic value to string and save. And once this is all done, I want to type into again as exit. So I'll just indicate on screen again, this one, and I want to type exit, sorry, in double quotation, exit. And once I type exit, I want to hit enter and save. Now this is my entire workflow, which will open command prompt, type CMD, type IP config, get the information and exit. Now I got the information, but I need to visualize it, right? So let's utilize one activity in UiPath where we can capture this information and we can store this information into a text file. So no need to print every time. Now in order to store this entire string information into a text file, what could be the name of the activity? So try writing text file and you'll see the name of the activity is write text file. So I already told you the name of the activities in UiPath are very easy, very user friendly. So drag write text file here. Now what is the text that to be captured? So text is the name of the variable, which is IP config. So I'll write here IP config. And what is the file name where I want to store? So there's no file. Let's create a file. Double quotation, IP information. Now not don't forget to give the extension. So dot txt. Save. So let's recap. We use send hotkey for keyboard entry. We pressed Windows button. After that, we typed CMD hit enter automatically see command prompt opens. We indicated command prompt. We gave IP config, enter, get the information, print it in text file and exit. Now let's close this command prompt. Let's connect this to the start node and let's hit start. Let's see what happens. See, 
enter did not work properly because it was too fast sometimes our application doesn't support the speed of ui path where while after typing cmd it immediately entered so if you want to increase the delay between these keys which it is typing you can utilize a property which is delay between keys if you hover on this property it will tell you that the default time is 10 milliseconds which is really fast you can maximum increases to 1000 milliseconds which is 1 second okay so let's see we can increase it to 200 milliseconds and let's see what happens now run done so did you see i just increase the time between keyboard entries of each and every text character which is used by delay between keys properties for type into remember that write it down somewhere when ui path works faster than your application you have to slow down the speed of ui path so that is where you have such properties which are very helpful now this execution is already done and it was done pretty fast within 4 seconds if you go ahead if you go to project panel and if you refresh and open the folder structure you can see ip config information open this text file and you have entire text which has been captured isn't this wonderful so you can capture such information now you can run such a bot you can create such bot as a generic bot and run on each and every machine let's say to ping a machine now in such a situation of coronavirus where everyone is sitting at home working from home and maybe they are connecting with their machines in office and they want to check it departments want to check that each and every machine is up and running so they have to go ahead and check each and every machine pinging uh, using a ping command and they have to check whether it is responding fine or not so rather than doing it manually can we utilize this robot and can we just ping it using this robot think about it if you guys can create such a robot let me know so you have a task where you have to go to command prompt ping some other machine and check whether the response is coming or not and print it in a text file validate whether the ping is received if it is received just mark it as confirm okay wonderful now we saw two methods of screen scraping where we saw full text we saw native now how ocr works everyone is waiting for that now ocr is nothing but optical character recognition where we can capture information out of image now let's see how it works so i already have downloaded one of the image which is this one now in this image there is some text which is written in black background there is a picture of lady and there is some logo of a particular you know, image poster now what we can do is we can go ahead in ui path and utilize screen scraping method now while we are capturing screen scraping method you can see we are not able to indicate text because this is entire image now if i indicate only a region so what i'll do i'll click with the right uh, with the left click on the mouse and i'll select the area which i want to capture and i'll release as soon as i do that automatically it will take some time because ocr is slow in speed if you see let's go to ocr we have microsoft tesseract select microsoft select region and go ahead with the region if you see the text is captured properly which is if you are always trying to be normal you will never know how amazing you can be maya angelo so if you see this is working perfect so we have two ocrs here which are free of cost in community edition one is microsoft ocr another one is tesseract ocr which is of google now microsoft ocr has few features you can select a specific language now for community you have only english language but for enterprise edition you can scrape multiple languages here now what is scale if you change the scale if there is a data which is bigger data and it has distance in between this text you can increase the scale to get more accuracy so this is how microsoft ocr works 
let's see how what are the features of tesseract osi if i select tesseract osi and if i try to indicate the region again this region let's see the accuracy of tesseract osi this is also working perfectly fine if you are always trying to be normal you will never know how amazing it can be wonderful however tesseract osi has little bit of extra features such as language characters now you can capture only number only letter only upper case only lower case phone number currency date and custom so these are the extra features which google's osi tesseract provides which microsoft doesn't provide right now and also you have a scale and there is a feature which is invert now when this invert feature works so some of you might be working on an application which is a blue screen application for example now it is very old application or you can say a bpo company which is still working on command prompt and the command prompt is blue screen or maybe older windows vista computers and you want to capture data out of them using ocr that time you have to check this invert property where text is written as white and background is maybe blue or black so it will fetch more better that is why this invert option property of google ocr is used okay now we get to know that this both works fine so we'll close this and let's go back and let's see let's see how we can utilize in a workflow let's say sequence set a start node rename the sequence as ocr and c get ocr text this is the name of the activity which you have to use drag it by default this one has a tesseract ocr with it and it is asking to indicate on screen i'll indicate on screen i'll indicate the region let's say this region now this time while we are working with image it doesn't capture selector it captures this the text position on screen okay so in the properties you have flipping region or the coordinates of the element section which is being captured so let's minimize it and now let's go ahead and let's see how we can change those here so i don't want tesseract right now i want microsoft ocr so what i'll do is i'll select this ocr and i'll hit the delete button on my keyboard as soon as i hit the delete button this panel is empty it says drag ocr engine how because get ocr text activity needs a ocr engine so i'll type ocr in the activities and i have different engines here so i'll click on this engine part i have multiple engines of ocr if you can see google cloud ocr microsoft computer vision ocr microsoft ocr microsoft project oxford and tesseract however all this rest three google cloud microsoft azure and project oxford works with api and the key right now we don't want to utilize that we want to utilize one of microsoft or tesseract so let's drag microsoft ocr here in the engine and save and now we will print it in white line before printing i need to create a variable so i'll write text i'll create a variable here right click say create variable and i'll say ocr info save go back sorry I print it in right line ocr info save convert it to a string value save go back check whether the image is open and run now ocr takes small amount of time to execute it executed in 4 seconds however it printed all the text so this is how you can utilize get ocr text activity to capture text out of images and then you can utilize those variables to print where you want or type into wherever that you want where if you want to type into some word file text file whatever that you want to do so now you can capture data from scanned pdf pages that we will see in pdf automation anyhow going further 
so this is all about screen scraping i hope you understood all three different different met different methods which is full text native and ocr full text is get full text native is get visible text activity and ocr is get ocr text activity and also we saw how data scraping works now we are going to see how what are the different types of recordings which are there in uipath i know a lot of you might have questions however please utilize the q and a sheet which i have been uh, you know i have attached with email in that sheet please write down your question in the best time possible i'll uh, either create one more column i'll answer then and then self otherwise i'll personally email you and resolve your problem because we have less time in session so we will try to cover as much as possible so that we don't miss out on anything now let's start with recording now till now we have been creating activities manually now what is recording feature recording feature of ui path is very good feature which automatically captures the set of steps that you want to perform on particular application web or maybe image so there are six different types of recording one is basic recording another is desktop then web recording image recording native citrix and computer vision now basic and desktop this both recordings works for windows based applications now you say why there are two different types of recordings because there's a small difference between basic recording and desktop recording so before we go forward let's write down the small difference so that we get to know and we will observe it during the recording so what is the difference between basic recording and desktop recording so basic recording creates full selector now what is selector i will tell you what is selector in the upcoming session stay tuned for that this is really important chapter and you don't have to miss out on the selector part because it is the most important part of ui path as of now just write down full selector second point basic recording doesn't create a container okay third point basic recording is slow than desktop recording now same vice versa in the desktop recording write down it creates partial selector second point it creates attach window container and third point it is faster now let's see what is the difference between desktop and basic recording and how this recordings actually work let's see them in action so for that i'll go to home screen okay uh, i'll open some of the text pad or maybe i'll just create one random information value 1 okay something like this now what we need to do is let's say i'll save it on desktop with some name sample info okay this file is here now what i want to do is i want to read this i want to automate this text pad now i want to click on edit well it's a format i want to click on font i want to change some font i want to change some size click on okay come back and say control s now to perform all this set of op uh, actions i have to manually create a workflow right so let's use what we can do either way let's hit recording and click on basic recording first 
Now, once you click on basic recording, a recording panel will open like this. In this recording panel, you have record option. Now, what are the different options we have? Let's go through them. Before we start recording, we have start application. So you can actually indicate the application on screen and you can actually manually get started from this recording. If, if you don't want to just, you know, open the application and start recording automatically. Other activity that you have click, select item and check. Other days, somebody asked in the Q and a session that how can we select elements from drop down? For that, we have to use select item. And I'll show you in the next upcoming video of web automation. Check is to check radio button, check boxes, uh, toggle button. Then we have type, type into or send any keyboard activity. We have copy, you can copy text or you can do the screen stripping. Then you have different options of mouse such as click, click relative, right click, double click and hover. You have different keyboard activities. You have select item check again. You have find element on screen. You can find this particular element. This activity will return you actual element value, UI element. Wait for a particular element to vanish. You can utilize this feature when you want to automate something which takes a lot of time for loading and you want to get started with your automation after loading is getting done. So you can element indicate an element like a loading button to wait for it to vanish. And after that, your automation will start and find relative element. You have windows, you can close again. You have text. It is again, same set of activities, which are there for mouse. You can say click, right click, double click and hover. This time, if you see, this is click text, right click text. Now, what is the difference in the click? Sorry. In this mouse element, you have elemental click where it captures your selector and this mouse you can see it is a little bit of different icon wise. So that is actually clicking on a particular text, which you indicate. So I, we will see this going further. And last but not the least, if you want to do image automation, so click on image, right click on image or double click on image. So these are operations which you can perform by pausing your recording. Otherwise recording can automatically do all these operations. Now let's see how we can get started. So let's say click on record. Now notice properly record. I'll say, I want to click on this notepad. Automatically it understood it's, it's a type box. So I'll type Mr. Kazam. Okay. I'll say empty field. Now, if you're typing a password, you should select type password option. It will automatically make it encrypted. Otherwise, you can select empty field if you're typing into a text box where the namespace is already there. So you can remove already existing data and then you can write your data. So if you don't select empty field, it will just overwrite beyond this value one where your, where your cursor would be. I'll select empty field, I'll hit enter. It removed value one, value one, did you see from that line and it printed my name. After that, I want to click on format. Now here comes use anchor. Anchor is a very good feature of UiPath, but right now I don't want to use it. So I'll say no. Then I'll click on font. Then I will click on this text pad. Now, as soon as I click on this text pad, it understands that this is a type box. I'll say Cooper and I'll say empty field. Then I will select size. Let's say I want size 40 and I'll say empty field and then I will click on OK. Automatically the text is converted. Then I want to come out of recording mode. Now there are different, different shortcuts, write down the shortcuts. If I want to pause my recording mode for three seconds, I have to use F2 button. If I press F2, you can see there is a small timer. And if I want to pause my recording mode and come out of the recording, then I have to hit escape button once. If I click on escape button once I, I get out of recording mode and I come to this page. Now here I want to send a hardware command control S to save this file. So let's go to type. Let's say send hotkey and indicate this area and say control S and say, okay, saved. Now 
if i click one more time escape it will save this recording and escape otherwise you can click on this save and exit so just click on save and exit and automatically a basic recording is created for you now let's open this sequence now remember each and every recording creates a sequence not a single not a single recording will create a flow chart for you every recording out of this will create a sequence also apart from basic other recordings will create partial selector only basic recording can create full selector that we will see later now let's open this sequence and if you see automatically a workflow is created for you isn't this great right so this was very simple you didn't have to do anything and automatically a workflow got created and let's check this workflow now i know you might have a lot of questions that can be edit this workflow yes you can I, instead of nisarg i can write down let's say brad pitt save instead of this cooper i can write down some other font instead of size 40 i can write down the size let's say 38 i can manipulate my workflow i can delete any of the activity if i want to if you by mistake click two times the activity might appear two times so you can delete extra activities so this is how you can create a workflow let's go back let's go to the notepad let's change this format and let's test our workflow whether it is working fine or not okay i'm keeping this notepad as open my cursor is here so it should remove me circle them it should write brad pit right now i go to run and say run let's observe what happens and done so my workflow executed within 6 seconds it performed all the set of set of operations and it automatically saved the text file so this is how you can utilize recording for small small reusable components in your workflow okay i hope you understood the basic recording now let's see what is what do i mean by full selector if you click on this horizontal lines on any type into or any click activity there are this horizontal lines if you see these lines will uh, allow you to see more options about this particular selection that you have done there is one option called as edit selector if you click on this selector if you see this is what the selector is which is automatically captured you don't have to uh, do anything now in this selector if you see you can modify class name you can modify title and you can modify see you can change it i can remove it i can write some star i can do anything i can modify the application name class name and title remember if you are able to modify application class and title the selector is called as full selector now let's see what is partial selector and let's see how desktop recording works now to do use a desktop recording what we'll do we'll utilize the same text file as of now okay and let's see how the automation goes let's go back to ui path let's say recording desktop i'll now desktop recording has all the same feature just the name of the recording is different and there's a small difference between desktop and basic as we have seen so hit record click on this text pad instead of brad pitt this time i want to write let's say india and telangana where i am currently staying empty field enter it works same format i don't want to utilize anchor as of now click on font then click on this font i want to select arial this time md field select the size and let's say 40 now remember if doing recording while recording i forgot to select md field and by mistake i hit enter automatically it removed if you see sometimes it might appear so not a problem we can go ahead and we can change this property in workflow later point of time so click on okay see it changed 
come back to the recording panel. Click on send hotkey and we want to save this. So click on the text pad, say control and S. Okay, done. Save and exit and our desktop recording is created. Now, if you see basic recording has seven activities while desktop recording has only four activities. Why so? Why it is not overwriting random information line? Uh, I have a question from Priya. Yeah, it removes only current line where your current text is written. Why it is not removing this? Because this is a different line. My cursor is currently here. So it will remove only that specific line, which is where my cursor is. If you want to remove entire value, I have one more option. I'll tell you that later. So I just want to remove this and I want to replace this with the Indian Telangana. So I'll write it something different, blah, 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 save. And I'll change the format. Okay. And let's run this workflow. Before running this workflow, I will show you what desktop recording exactly recorded. If you open, if you see, this is a little bit complex. Now here attach window is a container. And inside that container, there are activities say type into or click while in the basic recording, there was no container. There was directly type into and click activity. Now, if you see the difference, which I have given create basic recording creates full selector and doesn't create any container while desktop recording creates a partial selector and it creates an attached window container. Now, if you might have noticed, if you go to desktop recording, it creates attached window container and inside that container, your activities are written. Now in two ways, it is great because attached window will hold the main window on top of which you are working. Now, what is the advantage of attached window? If you have multiple notepads open, then attached window will work only on that specific notepad, which is selected rather than any other notepad. However, in basic, what might happen is that where your cursor is present, it might type into that particular notepad. It might not hold the top level container. So attached window holds top level Java container. Remember that now inside this attached window, my activities are written. I can modify, not a problem. However, if you check the selector, now let's go and click on this and say edit selector. And this time, if you see, I am not able to modify application class or title. This field is grayed out. I'm just able to modify this part. Now, when you're not able to modify application class and title, then that selector is called as partial selector. And also we have written one more point where desktop recording is faster than basic recording. Let's see how it goes. So I'll keep the sample open. I'll go and I'll select the desktop recording and I'll execute run. Now see the speed. It will be just a minor difference. But it is a bit faster than basic. Now, for normal human eye, we cannot observe the difference between basic and desktop recording. However, there's a small difference in speed and execution, which you can notice. Can I edit selector and attach window activity? Yes, you can edit selector and attach window activity anytime though, not a problem. What you can do is attach window holds the top level container, right? So you can go to the attach window. You can go to the selector and you can change your selector here. This will change your selector for entire activities, which are inside. If you go and if you check the selector now, it is changed here also. So you can change selector of attached window, not a problem. I'm going to tell more about selectors. Don't worry about that. We are going to see more about selectors in the next upcoming sessions. However, right now just concentrate on the recording. So I hope you understood the basic recording and desktop recording and the difference between them. Both works for the desktop applications. Now let's look at how web recording works. Okay. Now let's see, let's open any browser. Now this time what I'm going to use, I'm going to use fake name generator website. Now this is one of the website which we can utilize to capture some fake data for testing purpose. Okay. Which will generate some values like this. Now let's see how we can automate and how we can utilize this. 
Now in UI part, what I'll do, I'll create a sequence. Okay, remember, I know recording automatically creates a sequence. However, I'm creating already a sequence. I'll write here as browser automation. I'll select it as a start node. Inside this browser automation, I'll say open browser. I need to write the URL. So I'll copy this URL from here and I'll paste it here. I'll select browser type as Chrome. You can say hidden browser, new session or private, not a problem. You can do that. Now I'll select maximize window. And now rest of the part I can do using screens, sorry, do using web recording. So I'll keep my browser open. I'll hit web recording. Now you wanted to know how we can select values from drop down, right? Now here in the web recording, you'll see the extensive feature of select item activity. Now let's go ahead and let's record. So I'll say record. I'll select this gender drop down automatically. The values from that drop down pops up. I want to select, let's say mail as of now, click on okay. I want to select this name set, which is again a drop down and click on here. Automatically, all the values from drop down are printed in this video. I want to select, let's say, Australian. Okay. I want to select country. I want to select Australia. Okay. I want to click on this generate button. Click. Automatically, a click is done. Now, I want to capture the name. So, what I'll do, I'll hit escape because if I click here, it will perform the click activity, but I want to capture the data. So, I'll say escape. Copy, copy text. I'll indicate this data. I'll say no, I don't want to use anchor. Again, I'll utilize copy, copy text, address. And now I want to close the browser. So I'll just say save and exit. And automatically, a sequence is generated for web application. Now, also, web recording generates partial selector. So if you open this recording, automatically it has attached browser. Now instead of attached window for browser or web-based automation, attached browser is the activity which will be generated. There are automatically select item activities for the dropdown. You can select any dropdown value from here. Also, there is selection of language which you can perform and you can manipulate data. And after getting the text, you see get text activity is automatically performed and some variables are created such as H and div by default. Check those variables. Those are generic value variables, convert them into string. And let's print those, print those variables using right line. So I'll say double quotation name is plus for concatenation h is the name right yeah h is the name okay plus now i want to print address below so to print address below i have to utilize a new line command so just like in java or c c++ slash in is given to go to the new line or the next line in ui path we use environment dot new line so if you say plus space you have a function which is called as environment. So you see environment is already there. Dot new line. Or you can use dollar bbcrlf also. But we don't want to use that. We already have an environment dot new line function. So we will use that. Plus we have the address is and the address is div. However, in the address, what we are going to do is we are going to trim this address. So it's a trim because there will be some white space. We want to make sure that the white space is not printed. So trim name also and say, okay. And after this, we will say close the tab. So let's close the tab later. And as of now, we'll copy this entire attached browser. We'll minimize it from here. We'll copy this entire attached browser activity. And we'll paste it inside our browser automation, which we already did. Isn't this wonderful?
we already had created one of the activity open browser we just printed attach browser inside this and error is because of this variables so we will create two variables called as h and div which will resolve this issue okay save and now after this attach browser activity i want to close the tab and my workflow is completed so right now i don't want to keep my website open what i can do is i can close this website anytime and i can select this browser automation and let's say run automatically chrome browser will open look at the drop downs until and unless website is loaded it will not work see mail austin in australia it hits on generate button captures the data it will wait till the website is loaded and done if you see in the output our name is printed as jack and address is printed and we just used our web recording to do this operation i hope you have understood how web recording works okay by using f2 button i can give the delay while recording yes you can do that arpita you can utilize f2 button while recording also can i edit selector in attach window activity you can edit can i use the recorder to open web page yes you can use the recorder to open web page however i make sure that i utilize every time in a manual operation because that that would make it more perfect so this is how your browser automation or web based automation is done using recording so i hope you have understood how recording works for your path i have one more question it seems dynamic window title support yeah you can create dynamic window uh, we will see that in selector so this is how so today we have seen various things we have seen data swapping how data swapping works for web based application where the structured data is there we have seen how data scraping works for already a table tabular content we have seen screen scraping and we have seen all the different three types of screen scraping features where full text native and ocr is there we have seen the name of the activities and we have seen the different recordings such as basic desktop and web recording okay now there are three more types of recordings which is image native citrix and computer vision i wouldn't be able to show you native citrix because uh, i don't have citrix environment right now however how image automation works we will see in the next sessions upcoming sessions we have planned image based automation and also at the end we will see how to utilize computer vision feature of ui path now this is very important feature rather than doing it using recording i prefer to do it as a manual so i'll show you how we can utilize computer vision feature and we can automate more advanced automation where elemental access is not possible where you are not able to capture elements you are not able to indicate elements on screen so i hope you understand you have understood today's lecture and i think we have covered pretty much uh, what we wanted to cover in today's class so before i close this session i want to give you one task to do so one task i have already given another task is you have to go ahead go to fake name generator open this website select some random data okay anything that you want to select click on generate capture all this data first name address capture phone number capture date of birth capture email address i want only email address i don't want this text okay this is real email address capture company name so capture all this data and print that data into one of a text file in this format let's say you print that data into text file such as name print this name in front of it address print the address copied in front of this email print the email address in front of this and so on so capture all this information print it into text file and before printing the text file just make sure to give the name of the text file as the name of a person name first name of this person okay 
I hope you have understood the workflow. You have to go to fake name generator.com, select some random values, capture name, address, email, date of birth, company name, and other fields, print it into a text file. And the name of the text file should be the first name of that particular person. Thank you so much. I have talked a lot for today and I think we have covered a lot of things and I hope you have loved the session. Thank you so much. So we will connect again tomorrow at the same time, 8 PM and we will see further session, which will be based on, let me go back and let me see what is going to be tomorrow's point. And tomorrow we are going to see web best automation and selectors, how we can utilize the selectors more. Now, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead. Feel free to pin these questions into the questions Excel, which I have given. Thank you so much. And uh, please share PDFs. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to share this PDFs, which I've used. I'm going to share that. And uh, please repeat another task. Okay. Uh, training wants to know web, web once again. See, web best automation is easy. Uh, we have nine minutes more. I can show you immediately quickly. So for web recording, you just have to go ahead and utilize, you, you have to click on web. You automatically a web recording panel will open. Now let's see if I go to finance.yahoo.com in this website, let's say I just want to type into company's name. So I'll use the recording record. I'll click on the search box. Automatically to understand this is a search box. I'll type, let's say Amazon. Empty field. I'll say enter. Once Amazon is typed, I'll click on the first element. Now see this all things I'm recording right now. Okay. As you can see, this recording is currently going on. You can see the elements. If I want to scroll down, I have to use F2 button. Now, once I come to this Amazon's page, I will click on historical data. The page will automatically navigate to historical data. Now I want to scroll down and I want to capture all the data. So I'll say F2. I will scroll down. I have this data, but I want to capture only let's say this value. Now to capture this value, if I click, it will just click to capture. I have to do copy text. So I will hit escape button on my keyboard, which will take me to this recording panel. Again, I will say copy, copy text. I will indicate this text. And I will say save and exit. Now, if you see automatically a web recording is generated with the attached window, this attached browser automatically captures the top level container, which is application and title. Okay. And the activities inside are having partial selectors. Now we can run it again and we can check if we are able to get this data properly. Now we have used get text. A span named variable is automatically created. Let's try to print it. So I'll use message box. I'll drag it below get text. I'll say span. Otherwise you can create your own variable, custom variable. Now I'll connect it to the start node and I'll go back to this web page. I will go back to the first step where I started and let's hit run. Now see this time it is not executing because this page is very dynamic. It is changing variables continuously. So robot gets started. However, it is not able to click on the type box. So in such cases, we have to modify the selector. And that is why we are going to see tomorrow how selectors work. Okay. Now see robot is running, but he's not able to capture the element. In such cases, don't panic. We have selectors in our hand. So we will wait for error. Now the error will be displayed after 30 seconds because that is the implicit time of this particular, you know, any web, any activity in say UI path has a default time of 30 seconds to wait for a particular element to appear or disappear from screen. After 30 seconds, it will throw the error. You can see that it on screen, it will throw selector not found exception error. What about H and div? H and D were nothing but the variables which are automatically created. I will definitely share the workflow. Smriti. Thank you. Now, once the error is thrown, 
we know that this attach browser page is having some issues. So you go to edit selector and this it is invalid. We are going to see how to tackle with this selector issue tomorrow. Still, I'll show you how to repair this page and hit repair. Let's see Chrome, save. And this activity should not have changed. Okay, and done. So just, I repeat the selector. I'll say run and see what happens. So there are a lot of issues with right now with the selector because this website is not at all stable. It is changing its selector dynamically. So we have to see how to work on the selector issues extensively. We will see these issues tomorrow. So that is why I have covered only small part. Tomorrow we are going to see extensively how web best automation and we can handle the selector issues. We have last five minutes. If you guys have any couple of questions, please post it in the chat room. I might be able to answer a few. Can you please demo the recording of saving file from the web? Yeah, we can do that. It is easy. You just have to click on the download option. And once you have the save option, you will have a window panel open. You have to type into that window panel, whatever the, you know, the address or wherever the folder that you want to store, and then you can store in that folder. How to append text to CSV? Yeah, we can append text using the append activity. If you go back, to the activities of UiPath, you just check append and you have append to CSV activity. You can use this activity to append the data rather than overwriting the data. Also similarly, you can utilize append range activity for workbook rather than overwriting the Excel file. <laughs> Thank you, Reddy. Thank you so much. That means a lot for me. Thank you so much, guys. So I will share this workflow with you, which is day three scraping. Uh, I'll do it right away so that I don't forget to do that. I'll go to the drive location, which I have shared with you all guys. So in this drive, in the workflows, I have to create one more folder, which is day three. I'll create this folder. In the day three folder, I have to print this workflow, which is day three scripting recording. Okay, I can do that. Just go back to my documents, UI path, day three recording. And I'll just put this entire workflow in this folder. Now you guys can go ahead and check this folder, check the workflows, day three, and this workflow, which I have uploaded. So you can download this workflow, and those people who are not able to access, kindly check your drive location, share with me folder, and you will see this particular folder with you. If you're not able to see the folder, that means you are not registered or I don't have your data. Uh, yes, Vamsi, I have this link in the, ex in the email which I have shared. If you see, I have shared an email with all. In that email, I have given the link for this particular Google Drive folder. Yes, Nrinalini, the delay time can be increased. I will show how to utilize uh, implicit delay and explicit delay in UAPA. We can see that. We'll see that in the upcoming session. Uh, Vikas, I have knowledge on UAPA. I have knowledge on Automation Anywhere, Basic, uh, Blue Prism, as you can see, it is already on the screen. I have knowledge about Microsoft UI Flow. And I have knowledge of Selenium using Java. I have knowledge of machine learning using Python. Thank you. Uh, last two minutes, guys. You have any question? Please post it in the chat room. I might be able to answer a few, few questions, couple questions here. SAP automation. Yeah, SAP RPA. SAP is already developing their own automation tool, which will be integrated with the SAP. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure it is uh, like available right now or not. However, that is almost similar to UiPath. And even using UiPath, we can automate SAP. So that is not so tough. We can do that soon. Yes, Vikas, definitely we can have a chat. If you want, I have my personal number uh, on my email address. You can do that. Otherwise, you can check this number, which I have posted in the group. This is my WhatsApp number. You can ping me or call me anytime after the session, not a problem.
yes uh, adi we can do mix of recording scraping flow chart sequences whatever that you want to do i have just shown you components we can do mixture of all any time not a problem okay guys thank you so much as time permits i have to leave early it's 9:30 thank you so much thank you so much for joining let's hope to see you guys tomorrow enjoy the session